You're listening to Mom and Doc Talk, where we talk all things healing pans and pandas with an emphasis on homeopathy. Hi, and welcome back to Mom and Doc Talk. I We're here today, just Jody and I. Uh, so this is a, a treat sometimes to just talk to the two of us. Um, not that we don't love having guests, right? Because we get to learn so much from our guests. But sometimes it's fun to just come back and just talk about homeopathy and geek out on that a little bit. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to geek out a little bit on homeopathy and a specific concept that is really relevant right now as we're heading into cold and flu season. Um, and that's a concept of true and false acutes. And so um, Jody, I'm just going to give you a heads up and, and anybody who's listening today too, it's probably going to be a lot of me talking today. And Jody, I'm going to just remind you to interrupt me when I just get going and maybe have lost a, a parent or two along the way. Okay. Yeah. Um, do. And then obviously sharing your experience and how this has actually played out in your, your personal life, in your home, et cetera. Um, yeah. So uh, this is a really important concept when we're talking about complex chronic illness uh, in general. Um, so this is relevant outside of pans and pandas. It's relevant to complex chronic disease, period, and especially when the immune system is involved. And so it's this concept um, that we talk about called true and false acutes. And the reason this is so important to talk about is the way we're going to handle it is going to be a little bit different depending on what's going on. And so I wanted to explain a little bit about what I mean about those things, some of the things that we might be looking at that would be handling it a little bit differently, um, and make sure that everybody really knows when they definitely need to follow up with their provider versus when they might be able to wait it out a little bit on their own. Okay. Um, so the reason that there's this, this concept is that when things are involving the immune system, sometimes we will have acute illness that is actually part of our chronic case. That's when we call it a false acute. Um, and so what this will often look like is a mixture of acute illness symptoms and a worsening of chronic symptoms. So these will be the PANS kids that get a sniffle here or there, um, or maybe in PANS, sometimes they won't even get the typical acute presentation. Sometimes they'll just get a flare of the PANS symptoms. As they're healing, they'll get more of a mixture of both PANS flare and like normal cold or flu type of symptoms. Um, and so when we're seeing that mixture of things, we're really looking at an, a, an acute exacerbation of the chronic state that might have been triggered by a virus, because we all know with pans and pandas and other complex chronic illness, viruses can trigger chronic things, right? Virus does not always mean an acute thing. Um, so you look like maybe I need to pause for a second. You know what? It's, it's funny is I was just sitting here thinking like, this is the point where I sort of get lost mm -hmm. and confused, but also this is a topic that I've become very comfortable being lost and confused on. And I always like, I always, I, I understand what you're saying, but it's also confusing to understand. I'm just really grateful <laughs> having yeah. a provider that, yeah. that understands all of this and I can go to them to, uh, figure this part out for me. So yeah. I don't have to figure it out myself. Yeah. And sometimes it can look confusing because occasionally it will seem mostly typical acute symptoms and not much of the chronic state. And we will still see chronic case improvement mm -hmm. in the, with the remedy that we recommend for the acute state. Um, and so it's not always like, oh, or I'm not seeing any of the chronic symptoms arise or get worse with this acute illness that I'm having. So then it, it can just be a little bit confusing in that case, um, which is why, again, as you said, Jody, it's really important to work with um, your homeopath to help figure out what's going on and what the next right step is. So yeah. um, a true acute is going to be really different because it's, it will be just acute symptoms almost of suppression of the chronic state. So like, um, we'll see this a lot of times, especially in kids who are on the spectrum. Um, occasionally we'll see this in pans pandas cases. It's not as often though that we see this in pans pandas cases, but sometimes it is, it does happen. Um, so we'll see where there's an acute illness that comes in 
And it's like the best the kids have ever been. Like any behavioral stuff, any anxiety, sleep or whatever, it's all good. They're like the the snuggliest, like the rage-filled kids become sweet, cuddly kids. And there's some parents who've even said to me, if my kid could just be sick all the time, they'd be perfect other than being sick. Mm -hmm. um, that's more likely to be a true acute where the true acute is, is basically the acute illness is a little bit stronger then the chronic case, it comes in and temporarily suppresses the chronic symptoms. Like the body can only deal with one thing at a time. Um, and so it so temporarily suppresses the chronic symptoms. Generally, it's short-lived. It will resolve usually on its own. It can resolve faster with the correct homeopathic remedy. So it's still a good idea to call, even if you think it's likely a true acute, um, just so that you can get it resolved faster and get back to the state of uh, working on the healing for the chronic case that you need to do. Um, Cause what will usually happen is whether you use homeopathy or any other supplements or anything like that to help with the healing of the, the true acute state. Um, once the true acute has resolved, the chronic symptoms come back up because it's no longer being suppressed by the acute illness. Does that make sense? Yeah. You want an example? Sure. Okay. Uh, younger daughter, she's my mass cell, a little bit of light pants, uh, symptoms going on. Uh, she, a while back, she broke her radius in her ulna. Mm -hmm. And whenever that happened, um, all of her like chronic mast cells, mm -hmm. little bit of pans, like the ticking, the, the behavioral on, right? hyperactivity, it completely went away. Yeah. Um, it was like, it was all gone, which is lovely. And I see us in the group sometimes talking about how lovely it is when our kids are sick. Um, and it was so interesting because when that happened, I didn't like fully, recognize again, because I don't understand this stuff. And so we switched remedies and I thought it was the remedy change that had made all of her chronic stuff go away. Um, I was like, oh, we were on the wrong remedy the whole time. This new remedy, which wasn't the case. It was the fact that she broke her arm and her body was trying to deal with that. And while it was dealing with that, all of her chronic stuff went away mm -hmm. and we got, you know, a couple of weeks down the road to where, you know, her, her arm was healing that was starting to settle down. And then all of a sudden her chronic symptoms started to creep right back in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it's a really good example. So yeah, it can be from injuries. It can be from viruses or, or illnesses. Um, sometimes it can even be from like an emotionally traumatic state or something like grief. Um, it could cause for, cause us to sort of suppress our chronic state because we're so overtaken by the the more pressing immediate acute illness mm -hmm. um and so in those cases you're probably going to need a different remedy short term and then you're going to likely see this old the same symptoms that you were dealing with before come back as soon as that is resolved um or closer to resolve and then you might need to go back to the remedy you were on before the acute um and occasionally, sometimes the acute will be enough of a shift that you might need a new remedy. So it's always important to follow up because it's still it's still vital to um, evaluate whether or not, or not the symptoms that are present once the acute resolves are still actually well covered by the homeopathic remedy that you were taking before. Um, and your example, Jody, is actually really great to, uh, to show that it's not, in, in some cases, you don't want to just... Um, wait it out um, because it's something that could be a prolonged thing that that you can address relatively quickly if you use the correct homeopathic remedy to help with the the healing and the recovery or repair um, in your case. Um, so with the false acute, what's probably going to happen again, in the most clear cases of false acute is when you have a mix of chronic symptoms and acute symptoms, both getting worse at the same time. That's the most clear case of a false acute. It will not always be that way, but that's the most clear presentation of a false acute. In these cases, you're going to want to talk to your provider, your homeopath, because there's a lot of different things that could be done. It might be that you just need to take the same remedy and same potency more frequently for a short period of time um, if you're still responding to it, but just not quite as well. Um, it could, especially if you're somebody who's an as needed doser, you might need to just dose more frequently because your body's got more that it's dealing with in the moment. So it might legitimately need more frequent nudges. Sometimes it will mean an increase in potency if you're no longer responding to the potency that you were previously on or currently on. Uh, occasionally it will be enough. It will it, it, sort of, like I said, with the true acute, even in the false acute, sometimes it will shift this, the case enough that we see a new remedy. 
And this is where the magic comes in. False acutes are some of my favorite things. They, they are, they can be turning points for cases to help us see the next remedy that's going to help us get to, you know, one step closer to reaching that top of that mountain. We always talk about, you know, healing being two to three steps forward and one step back, like climbing a mountain up and down, up and down. Right. Um, and so these false acutes really give us a window into something bigger that's going on that maybe we couldn't see without these additional symptoms that show up in a false acute state. Um, and I can't tell you how many magic moments we've got. And I, Jody, I know you're dying to share one right now. I can just see it on your face. Um, where the false acute or the, the acute, an acute case gives us this um, really big opportunity and unlocks another layer of healing. And it's some, oftentimes there are remedies that we might not have found were it not for the additional symptoms of the false acute. And I can, I'll stop because I can just see you dying. Yeah. So just, I, I think that I just figured out that this whole thing doesn't confuse me. True acutes, I get. That's easy for mm -hmm. me to understand. It's the false acutes that trip me up and get me confused. And I like, I'll always go back to the one thing that I'm sure about on this topic is to have the appointment when mm -hmm. you're sick. It's so, so important. I have two different examples of this. Both have been truly transformative for two of my family members. Again, my younger daughter um, having a, uh, uh, she had a, something illness going on. She had her chronic symptoms. Both of them were going at the same time. Uh, we had an appointment and she ended up going on a remedy that she had been on before that she didn't respond all that well to. Mm -hmm. I was not excited about going back on that remedy because the first time was like, meh, meh. Mm -hmm. um, so we went on to that remedy and her acute symptoms started to get better. But then also there was like a dramatic, dramatic shift in her chronic symptoms, mm -hmm. like things that we had been working on for a really long time. Okay. And just seeing like tiny bits of movement in all of a sudden were like drastic shifts in them. Um, yeah. So that remedy was amazing for her. And that came about, <clears throat> pardon me, because of an acute appointment. And then my favorite story with this is my husband who had, you know, been trudging through for a while um, doing well. Uh, but then he ended up getting an acute illness and I had to like almost bend his arm backwards to get him to have an appointment with a provider other than his own provider, because we're in our comfort zones and we like to be with our providers, but he had the appointment with another provider and ended up going on a super, super unique remedy that I don't know that anyone would have ever found just because it, from what yeah. I understand, it's super unique and man, it's been just I, I, he still, I mean, that appointment was over a year ago and he's still on that same remedy and it has been, it has changed the way he experiences the world in a very, very positive way. Yeah. So true acutes can happen in any condition with, you know, if you have any condition, you, you it's possible to have a true acute. It's less likely again, when you're in early stages of recovery of PANS, but it can happen. Um, it is more likely in PANS and other um, chronic illness that involves the immune system to have increased complexity of the, because of the immune function that's being, uh, that's like basically at the root of what's going on, a misdirected immune response. So that when we have something that comes in that triggers and impacts our immune system, it makes sense that we would have like more complex responses to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's where we get, we have more false acutes that we see in complex chronic illness that involves the immune system. Um, and most complex chronic illness does involve the immune system, right? And like, even if it's not necessarily an immune, quote unquote, immune disease, there's overlap with all of the different um, systems in our body, right? That's one reason why it's just, it's so like frustrating, you know, we're, we're for those of you guys who don't know, we're writing a book, we're actually writing a couple of books. Um, one of the books is um, basically a lot of, of uh, I, I hate to use the word cure, but like cured cases are like people who are, are done. They've healed, they're done, they're moved on. They like, they've, they've recovered. Um, and we've got like a whole bunch that we're, we're sharing, um, to, to share with the world, you know, people's different, different people's experience. Um, and one of the things that is just coming up again and again with these, with these stories is how like we, in the conventional model, and even sometimes even within functional medicine, sometimes not as much, um, but we like chop the body up into different pieces, but like there's overlap for everything. Right. So the immune system is really involved in basically everything. Right. 
again, the, it, this is something that we're going to see in, in lots of different types of complex chronic illness. And like, you know, I, we see this so much, it's so much more understandable to people, I think, because of what we're seeing with long COVID, right? So we've mm -hmm. got this thing that should be acute. And for many people, it is acute, but for people who have the susceptibility or who have some early, early stirrings of chronic disease, that long COVID is more likely to take in. And so it just, this thing that's an acute illness is turning into this long haul, long, long deal because it's basically coming in and creating complex disease um, where something that should have been an acute wasn't actually an acute. It was a false acute that turned into this long battle um, that we're having to deal with. So yeah. um, I say this because it, again, it's just really important in this time when we're going to be going into more acute illness to recognize the opportunity that we have with false acutes and homeopathy to really take it to the next level, get a remedy that maybe we wouldn't find otherwise, because every single symptom that the body presents to us is a clue to the next thing that we need to stimulate healing and keep going, um, making another two to three steps forward um, as we're making that, that climb up the mountain of healing. I think for, for us as moms in our homes, this is so confusing. It, it is like homeopathy is confusing and we figure it out and we get kind of comfortable for a second. And then an illness comes up and it's like, pew, it like blows everything out of the water. And it's like, crud, we just got on track. We were doing well. Um, and that happens over and over and over again. And I would just say, just send the email, ask your provider if you need an appointment, what like, like lean into your provider during this time. Acute illnesses are, um, they're kind of a whole like figuring it out thing as far as is using homeopathy. But once you figure it out, it gets a whole lot easier. Like now I love using acute or I love using remedies on acute illnesses because we've got it figured out and we can see some really significant shifting. Mm -hmm. um, and even my kids know how to, you know, tell me, okay, I felt better, but it's three hours later and now I'm starting to feel worse again. I need another dose. Mm -hmm. um, it It's a really awesome thing, but I would just say lean into your provider because it's going to be hard. It's going to be confusing, but every single time you guys got us back on track, mm -hmm. um, we, we made it through every single illness. We made it through all of my confusion, which mm -hmm. should have completely derailed us, but I just leaned into what you guys were telling me to do and just yeah. went with your instructions and we got it. We made it through. And I would say that there might be some, um, some times when your provider, especially if your provider is a medically trained, uh, or not, you know, a naturopathic doctor in particular, or a medically trained homeopath, that there might be recommendations that are different than the homeopathic remedy, because it might be that the homeopathic remedy is still showing signs of doing what you want it to do. Um, and there, so there might be other tools to try and help you feel better during the acute. Um, but it's important to talk to your provider because that way we can make sure that what we're doing is likely to just support the body in its current needs and not adding something else that can create more complexity. Um, yeah. Or if it's really to the place that additional things are needed, like let's say that you have um, acute pneumonia and you need to use an inhaler. So a steroid and steroids are more suppressive. Steroids can create more complexity in the case but we also have to meet you where you're at. And if you need it and we're not getting it clear and uh, quickly enough, and you're having difficulty with, with breathing, then obviously we want to use something to clear up the, um, your, your, uh, your airways so that you can actually breathe effectively. So, um, just making sure that you work with your provider so that you can work through the options that might be needed in addition to homeopathy. Um, but obviously the goal is to not need to add additional things and that you can find the next right thing quickly and avoid the need to add any additional things. Um, because again, the less complexity that we can create in your body with having to work both with the illness itself and with it pushing back against the medicines that you're using to try and address the illness, um, the better it's going to be and the, the easier the, the healing path is going to be. Yeah. And it's so cool. I'm always talking about end goal. Like this is one of the coolest part of the end goal of, you know, now my kiddos bodies are working better. Their immune systems work fantastically. They still get sick. Um, Avery doesn't get pan symptoms whenever she gets sick, but 
we, we, we go to homeopathy immediately with acute illnesses now. And it's so neat seeing, I mean, I, I, I fully believe in homeopathy now, but it's just, it's still, I get mind blown by the fact that, you know, things that we used to always run to the doctor for, we can just go to homeopathy and get some nice, gentle help that doesn't give them side effects or anything. So having, having this is an end result made all of that work and confusion and tough stuff to get here. So worth it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So hopefully that didn't create more confusion for anybody. If it did, of course, reach out to us. We'll do what we can to clarify. Um, even if it means that we need to record like an extra, oops, we were not, we were getting a little too wonky because we understand this, um, at a level that maybe we went too deep into. Um, so let us know if there's any questions that you've got about this concept. Um, and just remember if and nothing else here, when in doubt, reach out to your homeopath um, because they will be the ones who can help you figure out exactly what's going on and what the next right step is to do. All right. Hope everybody stays healthy out there. And as we head into this cold and flu season, all right, take care, everybody. Bye guys. We hope you found this episode helpful, hopeful, and inspiring. We try to get a new episode out every week. You can make sure you don't miss any by following us on Spotify or subscribing to our channel on YouTube. If you want to connect with us more, join our Facebook group, Homeopathy for Pans and Pandas, where we have exclusive weekly videos and answer your questions about, you guessed it, Homeopathy for Pans and Pandas throughout the week. If you are already a member, give us a shout out and let us know what you thought about this episode. If you aren't on Facebook and would like to reach us, you can email us at podcast at resiliencenaturopathic.com. Until next time, take care and remember, this won't be forever.